Talata, come read this newspaper is from my friend. Words uttered to her by her father at age three. You see, he was always proud of his little genius. His dream for her was that as long as he lived, poverty in her life will not prevail. But reality kicked in, died he did, and the setting that he worked so hard to prevent now became prevalent. She stepped in school, a genius stepped out handicapped. Once a golden opportunity became a broken reality. Hurtful it was. You see, she was now at that level where she should have sat her whole level, which would have taken her to a whole new level, had not been for her financial level, which caused her not to level up to her counterpart. Carlotta, this shout sounded familiar. Except it is not her father this time, it's her husband. When my food, I don't care if you have to clean the house, look after six children, by the time I come home, my food must be on the table. Is this scare? Certainly this is not the way her father intended her life to fare. So as she sat one day contemplating where she was in her life, what she could have been, something sparked in her soul, and any yearning which caused her to decide to be. But her children now grown, what can she be? She thought to herself, is there still a place for me? What can I be at this age and stage? Am I competent? Can I do what it takes to earn a wage? As she weighed the pros and cons, she thought, who am I to be with this much odds against me? But nevertheless, being a fighter, fight she did. She took her jobs to pave the way for her success, success that wouldn't come if she continued in her dismal recess. Made it, she did, but this, my friend, wasn't quite easy. Right. For her eventual success caused her, her matrimony. Because you see, the road to success is paved with so many turns and thistle that to the eyes of the oblivious, it seems like blissful insanity. So it caused her vows to quit on her, but she did not quit on her dreams. For she realized that a person who quits on their dream is synonymous to a person who has never dreamt. Now the success she enjoys is never lightly taken, for her soul still aches from the bruises that she had to endure to reach where she is. The heart is still imprinted on the tablets of her soul. What keeps her comforted is the fact that her father, through the eyes of her spirit, continues to sing, to smile at her, singing sweet songs that you've made it. Her father can now be comforted in his grave. His soul no longer has to rant and rave. Carlotta, voice of her friends and foes, from whence comes your inspiration? You see, she has now become the wealth of immeasurable knowledge. For persons near and far who dreams of attending college. But as I sat and contemplate on the course this great woman life has taken, it came to me. For her greatness was, is like a volcano, for it was never quenched. Notwithstanding, life tried its best to strangulate her talents. But she waited her turn, bubbling beneath the earth's surface, waiting a chance to punks and show dominance. And as sure as rain, her chance came and the world was no longer the same. Every time I see you, why? Beats me, whips me, hurts every time as if a boomerang were coming from you aimed at the middle of my chest or I were the fastest trending viral video on the internet. A thousand hits per second. I feel like this is Sparta, and my heart is my own greatest enemy, violently demanding that which it isn't sure that it wants, beating me down, but deep down not wanting me to totally give in, as if its sole purpose were the senseless brutality of my power and will. And I go, oh, why does my body disobey me so? I demand my emotions be paralyzed, only to realize my pacer eyes are moving with the pace of your thighs. Then, as if this were a terrible play within a greater masterpiece, I feel like the stage of Shakespeare is a Midsummer Night's Dream. Cue the blood who doesn't recognize his important underground role, rushing madly for attention to be drawn to him through my skin. Enter perspiration. <laughs> Your job is to keep me cool, yet you drench me with shame in my madly misguided sweat. Bones buckle and muscles shuffle to the tunes of their own desire, and it burns oh, to God, breathe God. as though my oxygen has been set on fire. 
I can't not feel like I am the living quintessence of a poetic burial ground where the complexities within me have successfully brought each other down. To submit, I'll admit, I am deeply in, in, uh, all, all I stated are indisputable facts, making it easy to romanticize about that, but with balanced thinking and the intervention of my brain, I realize that I also feel this way when excreting feces but being forced to strain. True story. My people, you know what it is seeing that we've ended this edition. It still continues on YouTube, on Facebook, and you could hit us up on our BlackBerry. Thank you and welcome back to all of my BlackBerry people that are in the chat rooms. Man, them chat rooms are they were just waiting to get back in those rooms. Three rooms filled up and with share activities. So remember, if you didn't get us here tonight, you could join us back on Thursday for a rebroadcast, same place, same time. And be sure to check us out on any one of our social media avenues. If you're a Twitter junkie, hi. <laughs> King Leonidas at 46. You can check me out there. Be sure to follow me if you can. Thank you so much for joining us for another edition of Voices and Flow. <laughs>